Halo 5 Guardians is a beautiful, fluid first-person shooter, but it suffers from being the middle game in what is clearly a trilogy. 343 Industries does what it can to modernize a very storied, very old, and very beloved franchise, and while I'm happy they decided to take a few risks, their second Halo game still has some major issues. And while Halo 5 Guardians is certainly not the best game in the series, it's also not the worst. The game opens up with you in control of Commander Jameson Locke, the leader of Team Osiris, an elite group of Spartan soldiers. He is initially tasked with hunting down the Master Chief, who has apparently gone rogue. The campaign spans 15 chapters, and much like Halo 2, has you switching off between playing as Commander Locke or the Master Chief, with Locke dominating the action. I will say that Commander Locke is not as interesting of a protagonist as the Master Chief. He doesn't establish much of a personality for himself. The two control identically, and the only real difference is the weapon loadouts you start each mission with. The story does take some interesting turns, and in my opinion some unnecessary ones. All in all though, I found the plot to be rather generic sci-fi fare, and not nearly as interesting or exciting as previous entries. There are a few big set-piece moments during the campaign that are great spectacle, but for every great moment, there's an equally dull one. I will also say that the game does not do a very good job of bridging the story gap between Halo 4 and Halo 5. And unless you've been keeping up with Halo's expanded universe and lore, you may come into Halo 5 somewhat confused like I did. The shooting is where 343 has really knocked it out of the park, and they've done their work to make this the best playing Halo game to date. They have added the ability to clamber up onto objects and boost in all directions. The added abilities can have a major impact on the way the game plays. I say can because the game never really requires you to use them. While there are instances where you must shoulder charge through walls, it never really feels more than just a glorified way to open a door. While I'm glad they added the enhanced mobility, I wish I felt like it was more necessary to use them throughout the campaign. These abilities do play a more significant role in the multiplayer modes, but they feel underused in the campaign. One significant gameplay addition is that of a three-person fire team that assists you along the way. While I appreciate the idea of having a squad to cover you, in practice, your AI companions are more of a nuisance than an asset. Oftentimes, I would call for assistance, and one by one, they would come over and die because they hadn't first taken care of the enemy that had just killed me. I need support. I need support. Assisting. Other times they would simply block my path as I attempted to navigate tight spaces. These issues are resolved, however, when you play the campaign with friends. But when playing solo, it can be an annoyance. They do a good job of drawing the attention of enemies, however, freeing you up to flank larger foes and their radio chatter serves to liven up the battlefield. We get through this. I'll buy the whole damn bar. Halo 5 is nothing short of beautiful. The series has always been known for its attention to detail, fully realized worlds, and breathtaking backdrops, and this one is no exception. The game's visual quality and gameplay benefit from a smooth 60 frames per second that looks great and more importantly feels great. Every gun is meticulously animated and enemies fall in spectacularly satisfying ways. Nothing looks and feels better than watching a Promethean Knight disintegrate into a yellow shimmering particle void after you land that final shot. Halo 5 also has you visiting some of the most unique locations in the series. It's nice to see this universe brought to life in such rich detail, and each location has its own unique look and feel. You'll see everything from ice-covered cliffs to desert canyons, cities reaching up from the ocean depths, and abandoned starships. Let's go.
So at the end of the day, what do we have? We have an entry in the Halo series that doesn't quite live up to the standards set by its predecessors. Is this a bad game? Absolutely not. But as someone who grew up playing Bungie's Halo, I can't help but come away from Halo 5 somewhat disappointed. The great gameplay and amazing visual presentation go a long way, but they eventually wear off and you're left with a mediocre story and frustrating AI issues that make replaying the campaign less appealing than it should be. I really do look forward to seeing where they take this series after this, although I will be meeting new entries in the series with a more tempered form of excitement. Kelly, no. No need to do this by yourself, Chief. 